Hey, I'm Omar with Patterson Autos. You might not know me, but you probably know who Dom Toretto is. And if you know who Dom Toretto is, you know he loves cars, specifically Mazda. But more than Mazda cars, he values family. That's why today we're talking family cars. This is the all-new 2024 CX-90. It's Mazda's current flagship model, and it ushers hybrids into the current lineup. It's a very classy evolution of the previous third row offering, the CX-9. Now, a little history on the CX-9. This is the second generation, and it's been around since 2016. The prior generation was around for a decade, so it's a little bit of a testament to the timeless design that Mazda really cares about putting forth in these models. Now, full disclosure, you'll find a few little imperfections on the CX-9 because it's not a new car. It's been discontinued and replaced by the CX-90, so we had to borrow a certified pre-owned option. To be fair, so is this one. You may have noticed the sticker. Anyway, let's get into it. I mentioned the CX-9 has very timeless looks, and that is due to its Kodo redesign that came in 2016. It won a ton of awards and became a family favorite. The CX-9 is a very refined evolution of that Kodo design. You'll notice it's obviously bigger, the snout is a little bit more squared off, and the rear is a bit more bulbous. Now, on paper, this doesn't look like a huge change going from one to the other, but when you're driving the car, it feels like a very substantial difference. The CX-90 is bigger than the CX-9 in every dimension, except for height, where it loses 0.3 inches. It's 1.4 inches longer, 0.4 inches wider, but gains an impressive 7.5 inches in wheelbase. Now, besides the obvious changes in aesthetics and dimensions, the biggest difference happens in the drivetrain. The CX-9 got a four-cylinder 2.5-liter Skyactiv turbo engine, which got you plenty of horsepower and torque to move the whole family around. Now, don't get me wrong, if you like sporty handling, the CX-90 is definitely a great option. I actually say that it drives like a huge Miata. Even though it's got three rows and it's obviously much bigger, it shares that long wheelbase, a very low center of gravity, especially on the plug-in hybrid with that battery on the bottom. It features a double wishbone front suspension, which your favorite Porsche gets and the Miata gets, along with kinematic posture control, which we first rolled out in the latest Miata. For transmission, the CX-9 gets six gears, where the CX-90 gets eight. They both shift super smooth, but the CX-9 will feel a little bit more sporty. This is a fairly compact third row offering, so there's not a lot of space in the back compared to some of the behemoths myths that are out there, but it is a little versatile, so you get additional storage cubbies on the sides, a little bit more underneath in the case of the CX-9. Behind the third row of the CX-90, it's a little bit different. You don't get storage cubbies on the sides, but you do have a little bit of accessory space underneath, a little bit more length, and a more bulbous hatch for a total gain of about 1.5 cubic feet. Let's check out cabin space, starting with the third row of the CX-9. It's a little bit tight back here, as you might expect. It's ideal to have kids back here, but Mazda designed it with six foot, six foot, six foot, in mind. So while I wouldn't go cross country this way, it is something that you could use to take your coworkers out to lunch, for example. And it's plenty comfortable. You've got cup holders all around and USB ports even in the third row. With legroom increasing only 0.7 inches on paper for the CX-90, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it feels a lot more spacious. So you've got more width. You can actually fit three seats back here versus two in the CX-9. You get a little bit more headroom and you gain in total about six cubic feet in the cabin. Oh, before I get out of here, adding to the comfort for the CX-90 are air vents for the third row. Before we get into the second row, I just want to show you this door opens really far, more so even in the CX-90, and that makes it really easy to load kids in and out if you need to. Depending on configuration, both CX-9 and CX-90 will be available with a bench in the second row or captain's chairs. This is the signature trim, which also gets you a second row center console, and you'll see that in the top trim of the non-plug-in hybrid CX-90. And while I'm back here, there's triple zone climate control, so driver, passenger will each get to pick their temperature. The cabin and both models will have to be a little bit more democratic and your controls will be right here. Second row in the CX-90 is a little bit more spacious, feels a lot more premium, and if you've been following along, you counted the headrests in the back and did the math on the front, you know that it's either a six or seven seat configuration in the CX-9, or the CX-90 will seat six, seven, or eight. By the way, this is what the captain's chairs look like in the second row without that center console, but you'll still get a fold-up table with cup holders. Climate control for the back row, like I mentioned earlier, USB-C ports, and heated seats for the second row. By the way, here's that super wide opening door. Go so far, it almost hurts my arm. Comparing the two, the CX-9 does have a little bit of a more cozy cockpit, but it's still very comfortable. When this car first came out in 2016, it intoxicated me so much that I considered having children. Whew. My respects to you, dear viewer. 
So both are family SUVs, both are driver's cars. If you feel comfortable in the tighter cockpit of the CX-9, it's a very good option. It is a little more playful than the other. So it's a very driver-centric cockpit, digital dash, and the higher trends will give you Mazda's active driving display, which you won't see in the camera right now, but it projects information on the windshield. That'll be your speed, traffic sign recognition will show you if you're speeding, your navigation directions will show up there, your safety features, all of those notifications will show up there too. So your lane departure warning, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, smart brake support, all of that shows up there. And this is a very safe car. All those advanced safety features got Mazda a lot of awards and they are further enhanced in the CX-90. Moving on to the center console, up top is your moonroof. Black headliner, always a plus. An auto dimming mirror with home link with up to three garages that you could open. Down below that is your Mazda Connect system, which is a nice widescreen and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto will take full advantage of that screen to make it easy for you to stay off your phone. Worth noting, this is not a touch screen. Everything's controlled here. And if this is new to you, it might look a little bit confusing, but it's very straightforward. The knob can be used as a dial, a joystick, or a button. With the little dial controlling your volume, making it easy for the passenger to make a quick change. 90 interior, I've said it on paper, it's it's not a big change, but it feels so much more spacious. You get a lot more legroom here for your knees. It feels a lot more premium for sure. This is a fully digital dash cluster. Your infotainment screen is either going to be a little bit bigger or a lot bigger, depending on how you want it configured. Up top, you've got a panoramic moonroof, which you didn't have in the CX-9. I'm actually going to shut this. This here will show you who's buckled up and who's not. There's that auto dimming mirror with home link again. Told you about this infotainment screen. And one thing that I really like is the feel of this button. When you test drive this, just touch this button. It feels so good. Climate controls are pretty straightforward, exactly where you'd expect them to be if you're coming from the CX-9. The center console is a little bit wider, but very familiar and gives you a few new buttons. This MI drive switch is going to help you select between sport, normal, EV or off-road mode. Behind that is a button where you can start to charge your EV battery as you're driving. This is for hill descent control so you can save your brakes when you're coming off the mountain. And this button will bring up your 360 camera. By the way, this MI drive switch has one more mode that is not shown and that is for towing, which in this case, the car is not equipped with it, but it can tow 3,500 pounds just like the CX-9 could. If you go with the Turbo S option, you can tow a whopping 5,000 pounds. I really wish I could show off sound in the car through your TV speakers. Unfortunately, I can't, so just take my word for it. Bose is five stars and with a sound stage as big as the CX-9 or CX-90, it sounds killer. So, family, if you've started one and you love them as much as you love to drive, then this is the car, or this is the car. I don't know, man, pick one. You're gonna have a great time either way. We'll be happy to take great care of you at either Tustin Mazda or Huntington Beach Mazda. Thank you so much to Patterson Autos for lending us these cars to show to you, and thank you for watching as always.